Jambo jambo E jambo watoto wa Afrika Eh yeah. This is Alid Africa and today we're featuring Amos and Josh Imani yako hakika mami tabibu wa moyo wangu Amos and Josh are the freshest and hottest thing in the Kenyan music industry, riding on hits such as Badai with Rabbit and Nerea with Sauti Soul. They have known each other for over five years and found one another singing in groups together in church. Mfano wako hakuna kwa wema umesifika imani yako hakika mami when the opportunity presented itself in the form of Tasker project from 6 they went together juu yako tabani Amos is a graphic designer born and raised in Kenya. He is the old school kind of guy as he likes Bob Marley and other legends. He considers them soulful. He is reserved, a guy who doesn't put himself much out there. <laughs> yeah, I try as much as possible to keep my public life public mm-hmm. and my private life private. I'm, sure. I'm quite a reserved guy. <laughs> I was one of those guys who were very, very involved in church activity as a kid. Um, one or two of them were in the church. Um, and it was like that, the acting, the singing, the dancing, and the, just the whole involvement in art, even in primary school, I think, was just a major, major contributor to the person you see today. Josh went to Olympic primary school, then later, Upper Hill School and proceeded to the University of Nairobi for his graduate education. And I went to Upper Hill School. Um, that's when music became music to me. I met a lot of people who are very talented and uh, we worked on music together. Um, that's, when, that's when I met, I met some members of Sotiso. Josh is a first one in his all boys family. He believes in believing in people. He maintains that no one can beat him at being him. I've I've been a performer from a very tender age. It's just that I never really thought of it. It's just that I found myself there. Like the first time I was on stage, I was three years old, dancing. My mom was singing and I was dancing on stage. not, it wasn't planned. I just got on stage. <laughs> I just got on stage and started dancing, and that was crazy. My my mom and and sumbanga to sana, so that's what my and my mom decided to just nurture that. Welcome to another episode of Alit Africa where we raise the levels of leadership dialogues. We engage with African leaders, game changers, business mavens, and the gurus of personal development and productivity. With me today is Amos and Josh, music artists. Welcome. How did you guys meet up and what makes your relationship special? Um, well, we met in church so many years ago, like about more than five years ago. Mm-hmm. and. Uh, We've been singing in church ever since to date. Um, that's why I met him most. That's where I first saw him sing. I'm like, wow, people sing in this world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's why we met. We met in church, and uh, yeah, we decided to do music together. Uh, once the TPF uh, opportunity presented itself, mm-hmm. and this time around they were allowing groups to participate. So we thought, uh, why not go in as a group? 
Yeah. Why is music important to you and what do you intend to achieve through it? Music for us is, is that one thing that we decided to dedicate our lives to do. Mm -hmm. um, because the music allows, it's, it's an avenue that allows us to share many things with the society mm -hmm. that we may feel it's a message that needs to be out there. And I think it is, it is since we are gifted in that field, um, I think for any artist out there who has influence, it becomes like a mandate for them. It becomes something that they need to um, think about very carefully, the message they pass across and, and how, how much influence they have, um, what they say, how will it affect the people out there. So I think for us, it, it's been important for us to try and um, balance. And in as far as we give ourselves to the music, we also give our minds to information. Mm -hmm. uh, fame is fleeting, but you have managed to stay grounded. What values guide you through your path of fame? Oh, okay. Um, one, we before before the, our journey started way before we even got any kind of fame, yeah. because we we decided to take time and prepare. Mm -hmm. Like before TPF, we, we used to practice, and we practiced for around three months. Yeah. And it wasn't about just vocal practice, it was about preparing ourselves mentally. That why are we doing this? What are we in this for? Um, is it something that we want to go through with, whether we win or not, you know? Whether things go the expected way or not. Mm -hmm. So what are we in it for? So that is usually what keeps us level-headed. Why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. Why are we doing this? What's our source? What's our strength? And you know, whenever we get away from our strength, and our source, we know we are not strong anymore. So we attribute whoever we are to God, to our relationship with God, to our relationship with our friends, who we can be really free with, and one is a don't be a quill, you know, people who can just mm -hmm. tell you what your father He knew not do. Our mentor, uh, uh, Bishop William Dendo, like Bridge Chapel, someone who worked with us, even before Tipe, Kitambo, mm -hmm. Uh, if, if someone gets to interview him at, a, at a tour, another side of us that we don't want people to know. <laughs> but yeah, so, <laughs> you know, so, <coughs> yeah, that's what, that's, that's, that, 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 those are some of the questions that keep us always seeking that same place of strength, that same mm -hmm. place of structure and grounding, like, why are we in this and are we achieving whatever we wanted to achieve? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what gives us strength? What, what is our backing? You know, and we know whenever we, step away from our, our, our backing, it's, it's, it's done for us, yeah. Talk to us about Nerea and why it was important for you to do that music. Um. Passion, passion is a reason for doing things, mm -hmm. um, but I think um, vision is the reason why people stay in yeah. a particular path to make sure they, it, it's what keeps them in that particular. Passion can get you, you know, anywhere, but vision, vision is that thing that sustains that, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Nerea was practically a story. I know so many things came out of it, um, some interviews here and there, some um, um, women coming out to say that we are trying to um, push, yeah, we're trying to police them or push a certain agenda, of which we were just simply trying to tell a story. Mm -hmm. um, Nerea, normally, um, in, our, in, the, in, the, in the culture we're in, in our society, usually they've created a picture that men usually run away from responsibility. If anything happens and, and they find themselves in that kind of situation, mm -hmm. um, the guy is going to, you know, like, run away. And this, this we created a scenario in which um, the man thinks, um, you know what, um, so it happened, um, and this is where we are right now. But we don't need to do anything drastic, you know. Let's just find a way of making this work. And, and th that was the major, you know, intention as to why. And I think there's so many things in society as opposed to that particular topic that people need to talk to about. To talk about. Mm -hmm. And I think um, music allowed a conversation to, to which, which is a beautiful thing, which is something we really want to see happen mm -hmm. more with the kind of music we put out there and the kind of messages we put out there because it's good for musicians and people who have that art and they have the influence that they have to put things in society that can start a conversation, that mm -hmm. can generate um, uh, a lot of solutions to those kind of situations. So Nerea for us was 
a beautiful story that had a beautiful okay what role has spirituality played in molding you people as musicians i think that's everything i think our, our spirituality is everything it's the core of our life it's the core of our of our music is the core of our brand who we are um for example whenever we go for a show or whatever we do a suit after corner we just look for a corner and pray it, it, may go, it, it is a culture for us and it, it, is, it, is, it is basic, it is foundational for us, it is mandatory for us to do that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, and, and we've come to learn that everything, everything great has to, everything, everything great or, or the greatness that we're looking for, we've come to learn that it has, it comes from a source mm -hmm. and that is what we ascribed to. So mm -hmm. that is what that is what that is what it is to us. It's it's everything. It's the core mm -hmm. of who we are and the mm -hmm. core of our brand. Yeah. What is your vision for the African music scene? Now mm -hmm. the African sound has, has now become a worldwide hit. You know? Drake number one song Drake's mm -hmm. number one song mm -hmm. is Kapuka. For real. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's Kapuka. <laughs> It's Kapuka, mm -hmm. you know, and that was, that was a Kenyan sound. Biba Sorry is Kapuka. Biba Sorry, mm -hmm. you know. That was a Kenyan sound. But now, um, usually worldwide, it's like, it's like sounds come and go. Mm -hmm. um, there's a time Ragaton was it, and everyone was doing it. Then the world goes back to maybe what the West dictates, mm -hmm. trap and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Then it comes to, you know, and right now, currently it's, it's the African sound that everyone is trying to use. Ev and I mean everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone is really trying to use. And we'd want to, as Brandemos and Josh, to be part of just stamping that African authority worldwide. Mm -hmm. As far as we can reach, mm -hmm. as high as we can. I, I wish, yeah. if, you, if we could play you some of our music, we are really trying to me, ask we it's not it's not about it's not about just the, there's a Kenya it's not just it's not just about making money in Kenya it's about exporting Kenya mm -hmm. to the world like what do what will Pakistan listen to what comes to comes mm -hmm. from Nairobi mm -hmm. you know will China listen to to that because China are listening to Drake senior mm -hmm. China are listening to Biba mm -hmm. Nana and he's using Kap they're using Kapuka Basically, so we want to be part of that movement that stamps the African sound all across the world. Yeah. So, this uh, the BETs, the Grammys. Let's let's shoot high. Yeah. Nick, you have a Grammy on Kumbuke interview. Yeah. Hold it right there. We are going on a short break. We'll be right back. They tell them the truth. There's nothing to lose. No, you keep the fire burning. The fire burning, it tell them the truth. There's nothing to lose, no. It keep the fire burning. Welcome back. This is Eyelid Africa, and I am with Amos and Josh. What was your experience working with Sir Oji Soul and what influence did they have on you? It was, it was, a, it was a good project. Yeah. Um, we had a good time. We had a very good time. And people know of Nerea, but we, we've had a long working relationship. And we've learned a lot. And I, I would say they're amongst um, the first artists who who kind of who kinda welcomed us into the industry. Um, probably because of what they saw in us, but to uh, know that they welcomed us into the industry. Many other artists also played their part, you know, mm -hmm. getting to meet Waire, getting to meet Nameless and stuff like that. And we got to learn a lot. And one thing that they've taught us and we are holding on to to date is you can never cheat the grind, you know, you can mm -hmm. never cheat the hustle. Yeah. We have to put work. 
mm. we have to put work mm -hmm. what we do we have to put work we have to research we have to keep um we have to stay in the know what is happening what is currently going on and what am i contributing to the industry what am i contributing to society <coughs> and so that's um we've learned a lot we've learned a lot and uh it has also uh shown us that we we also have something that we need to treasure for ourselves and have something that we need to develop mm -hmm. constantly because if 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 a group that was considered that is considered um amongst the big groups in Kenya decides to but there we we need to work with those guys mm -hmm. it means that there's something that we can offer True. so it has it has made us know that we need to constantly work on ourselves work mm. on products and work on things mm -hmm. yeah are there local musicians that inspire you yeah, I mean, <laughs> because we've been here since we were born, so <laughs> yeah. of course we've been looking up to the black nameless, black Eric Wainaino, the impact he's made in the world. Um, so many people, if I start naming names, we just sit here and just talk about mm. so many guys. Mm -hmm. There's so many. Yeah, but all no, them, I know. think, <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> back. Yeah. But all you know, I think uh, it's, 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 music is, is, well, so much a competition it's a contribution i guess um it's what you have that you put out there mm -hmm. um that gets into that big pool mm. big pool of what's happening out there and i guess we also what we have learned i think we, we will definitely work with so many people out there yeah um and we'll help as many people as we possibly can um with knowledge information yeah. and any way we resource we can, any, mm. because because it is it is out of that that we try to build the industry as a whole um and i think what you got from them basically is just work hard. Mm -hmm. The work ethic yeah, they work. have was was, yeah. was crazy. We did crazy studio hours, um, long hours, um, just working on one song. And and so what people listen to out there, they have no idea how much time and sweat mm -hmm. that goes into making just one song. Now mm -hmm. the, the amount of creativity, the how many people are involved in the project, and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So. It's it. We, they just showed us that there's no easy way for, for you guys to get up there. You just need to really, really work. And that was a good mm. lesson, I guess, which has helped us. You would, you would say you have a grind, per mm. yeah. The music industry has its challenges. Challenges. Share with us some of the challenges that you have faced. I guess as a group, every industry has challenges. Um, every business has has its own um like setbacks. Um, and I think. As Josh said, music is a business. There's that period of every business that you have not broken even. Mm. That you, you put more money in and more resources and more time in than you get, yeah. and then then it gives you back. And and anybody who wants to sacrifice to be in the music business should know that this happens here as well. Yeah. And they should be ready to go for the long journey instead of just waiting for mm. something to happen and they fall into quick cash. And, it's, this is a business just like any other, and you have to create a model that works for you. Um, um, just as he said, just make the right relationships, because that's usually the most difficult one yeah. for artists. We have met tiny artists that have gigantic egos. And <laughs> you cannot, you cannot give them advice even for you yeah. know, a piece of bread. You know, just, you know, and it becomes a problem because for a person like that, how do you help them now? You mm. see. And you've met, you've met gigantic artists yeah. that are so down to earth. Talking to them is so easy, and they're ready to help you with information and you mm. know, give you some guidance on what to avoid in the industry. You know? Meaning that people to help you are out there, and they're yeah. ready too. Mm. It's only that sometimes we never really look, give give it the perspective that um, um, if I want to become that, I mm. need this and that and that and that person. Um, so people just think me. I'll just go and do my thing. And then you guys will just have to accept, and then you guys will just have to play my music, uh -huh. and then you guys will just have to, <laughs> and and we have we have learned that that's not that's not exactly how it yeah. goes, because you have had to make very many relationships in as far as when the media is concerned, and and the people there, and um, radio stations, TV stations, um, producers, um, so many so many relationships, artists even, yeah. um, some people who are not even in the music scene, just they are completely out in the corporate world and they're doing very different things. Because these are the things that keep you grounded. These are the things that help you, you know, like a business strategy. Just keep you in people's eyes for future business, basically. Mm -hmm. So you have to have content. Um, so if you're, if you're a musical artist out there, I think our best advice to you is have as many, 
have as many songs written down uh-huh. as you possibly can because sometimes you never really know when that opportunity comes uh-huh. and now they give you what you didn't have say na bidi sasa ile ulikome ulikuwa nayo ndio sasa unaiweka as opposed to you waiting for that opportunity and it gets here you have nothing uh-huh. um, and then you and then yeah. people are wondering so all this time you know so i guess challenges will always be there but just be willing to live through them mm-hmm. to become the success you want to be as music artists mm-hmm. what changes do you think must be made to make kenyan music influential more influential what we need to do um to make our music industry stand out even more i think i think we are doing quite well mm-hmm. my honest opinion i think we are doing quite well guys are understanding different roles that need to be um performed in a specific way and we have specialized people who are getting into those roles depending on their personal strengths mm-hmm. producers are doing a good job um right now I, as in other nikiangalia songs that have been released recently there's no show the song yeah. you know just some okay. beats that are just put together mm-hmm. somewhere you know guys are doing a very good job all all across the country in Nairobi Mombasa Kwanza Mombasa they're killing it you know guys are just doing an amazing job there are songwriters who are establishing themselves as songwriters and some other people who are just performers mm-hmm. record labels are coming up guys are investing into music you know people are putting cash into guys doing their their craft people are actually there, there are more people now believing in the industry than ever before so it's just a matter of time and guys keeping on you know it might get tougher um we need to we might need to fight our way through more and more you know but we need to keep on you know we need to keep, keep on and fight as a as a unit fight as an industry yeah i think i think we are doing we, we are getting our math right yeah i think we are doing quite well yeah last but not least question what is your advice what advice would you give to the youth um artists out there young artists just discipline yourself that's it i think it's discipline. for me it's discipline we have to discipline ourselves um we have to know that diligence due diligence will will reap you lots of rewards mm. if if you're not diligent if you're not um disciplined in what in what you you're doing eh uh, you know we i know being a musician has a lot of ego <laughs> within it there's a lot of ego but you have to separate your stage personality with your kawaida persona which now makes deals um goes for studio time and things like that mm. and needs relations mm. you can have that uh, you can have that alter ego by the way it's okay that on media and on stage you're this arrogant crazy person for example Beyonce on stage she's she's mad crazy so you know be, yes but in terms of relations and how she re- she relates to people and media and how she represents herself in term, um on in interviews and things like that she's very you know she's very nice she's very composed and things like that and you can tell that she works on her craft you know it's about discipline it's about the much time and effort you put to your craft yeah so to be disciplined too Let's do that for ourselves. Yep. Um I think believe in yourself. <laughs> believe in yourself and try as much as possible to stay grounded because I think that is the only way through humility mm-hmm. because I think that's the only way you can soar as high as you possibly can. Um people will always admire somebody who is successful who does mm-hmm. not boast as opposed to somebody who's not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm um, small but acts as if he is you know mm. and I think just be humble believe in yourself and listen to advice just learn and grow thank you for joining us this is Alid Africa and I have been your host Sarah Yunis our guest today has been Amos and Josh mm.